This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, it's all about the peppers. All different sizes of them, different colors, different heat and spiciness to them. We're gonna be going to the fields and harvesting them, crossbreeding them, selling them at the farmer's market, and creating recipes, trying to win awards with them. Today, we're taking a look at Scoville from Tasty Minstrel Games. I'm gonna show you how the game works, and I'll see you on the other side. Here we have Scoville set up for three players. Let's show you what you're trying to do in this game. One of the main ways to score is to gather different types of peppers and then turn them in for recipes for certain points at the end of the game. Or you can turn in certain peppers at the farmer's market for coins, sometimes coins and points, and sometimes coins, points, and other peppers. And you can get an award plaque for planting a specific pepper type out in the field, which will be worth points at the end of the game. Everyone gets a shield where you'll be hiding all the peppers you have, all the coins, and some special tokens that you might use throughout the game. The game goes through multiple rounds, and each round typically goes through a number of phases. In a typical round, the first thing you'll do is you'll auction for these different peppers and for turn order. So everyone will secretly put some money in their hand, they will reveal, and they spend that money. And in order of who spent the most, will then get their order of this uh, type of card. They would essentially just discard this card and take that type of pepper from the supply and discard the card out. Now the peppers going from least valuable to most valuable in this game are obviously different colors, but they're also different thicknesses or heights. So you can easily see them if you have uh, trouble seeing different colors. You can see that this one is definitely much more tall than this. I'm gonna flip them over so you can see sort of the height of these. So I've just flipped them on their side and you can see the height as they get more valuable, they get even taller. And it's much easier to see in person when you're sitting at the board that the height's different. Now also, the leader of that auction, not only did they get to take the peppers that were on that card, they get to decide where they want to be in turn order. There's three players here, they can be first, second, or third. Sometimes you want to be first because certain phases, the first player will go first, but in the harvesting phase, the last player will go first. And so let's just say the turn order went like this. First we'll go to planting. So in this turn order, each player is going to be able to plant a pepper. And so that player will plant a pepper anywhere that's adjacent to where there's at least one other pepper in the board, and each player will do that in that turn order. Now this wouldn't happen until later in the game, but when you plant, if you've planted either the ghost pepper, the black, the white, the brown, or even, or a purple, orange, or green, you get to take this plaque. Typically, uh, the plaque on top is gonna be worth more points, and that's just points that you'll take behind your shield for the end of the game. Then we go to the harvesting phase, going in backwards in turn order, so this player is going to be able to go first. On the first turn, everyone is going to start their farmer on this space, but after that, all the farmers will be out there, and you'll move from wherever you had ended. Typically what happens is you're going to move your, father, your farmer up to three spots, and when you stop in the, the intersections of each of these turns uh, or spots, you get to crossbreed the peppers. So for example, we start here, we can't harvest there, but we're going to move one. You always move sort of on these different diamonds that are in between things, and you can never double back by default, uh, basically to, to go back to where you were. So we're gonna start here. This farmer's gonna go here and he's gonna harvest this blue and red pepper of a crossbreed. Now everyone gets this little player aid. It has a player on the backside going through all the phases. And on this side, it has a crossbreed chart. It might look confusing, but don't worry. It's actually pretty simple. We are harvesting a blue and a red pepper. So you just look where those intersect and I would get a purple pepper that or that player would incense. So they're gonna get this pepper. They're gonna put it behind their shield. And then that player is going to continue to move and they're going to move like this and now they're between two blue peppers and on this here uh, two blue peppers will actually get them two blue peppers so they get those behind their shield and then you go to the next player they would harvest and keep doing that till everyone has harvested and for example next round when you go to harvesting phase it might start something like this and farmers would start from where they left off they can actually start the movement by pivoting and moving in a certain direction but again they can't double back by default then we go to the fulfillment phase. Again, starting this way and going this direction, like this arrow, each player is gonna get a chance to fulfill one of these three types of things. They could spend certain peppers from behind their shield, they would discard them to the supply, and they would take whatever's on the right. Here we would get a brown pepper, three coins, and it would be a point at the end of the game, and they'd give you different combinations of things depending on what you gave up. You could also create one recipe, which is turning in from your shield, from behind your shield, those peppers, and then taking this, and that'll be worth a certain amount of points. Obviously, the more points, the harder they are to do. And if you want to, you could actually sell peppers from behind your shield. You'd get a dollar for every two of that pepper out on the field. So here there's two blues. You could sell a blue for a dollar. 
Now that's pretty much it. So you would then start again with auctioning, turn order, go through all these phases again. Now at the end of the round, if there's less of these cards than there are the amount of players, we then go from the morning to the afternoon. And so those will bring out these green cards, which will be have better peppers. You're giving away betters, but you're getting better sort of the, you know, the, the second half of the game, if you will. There will also be now green afternoon cards for during the auction. You'll be getting better peppers for those. And you'll be continuing to play those rounds until either there's less recipes than the amount of players left or the same goes for the farmer's market afternoon cards and then it'll be the last round and then you see whoever has the most points at the end and at the end of the game you're going to add up all the points on all of the farmer's market cards you have all the plaques you have all the recipes you've fulfilled you'll get one point for every three coins and these are special ability tiles we haven't talked about yet but everyone you haven't used will also be worth four points and these allow you to break the rules of the game like moving an extra step during harvesting planting an extra pepper during planting or also double backing and doing a U-turn during the harvesting, whoever has the most points is the winner. All right, well, there is Skullville. Well, first thing I like about this, obviously, is the cool and interesting theme. I always like themes about food in general, uh, and this is just so unique, the way that the theme works. It's very thematic in the game, the way that you're going around the fields and, and you know, harvesting the peppers and then either selling them for money and some more peppers, or you're going and trying to make recipes for them. So I love the theme of this, and the game is very thematic in its own right. Uh, I love that there's different ways to score. So, you know, you've got those recipes. Those are the big points. Those are the ones you're working up to. You're trying to get the right ones, you're you've got to turn them in to get these big recipes, and they range from easier all the way to very hard, but you're getting more and more points each time. Or you could go over to that market where you could turn in some of those peppers and get some other peppers and some coins and things like that, and some points. So a little bit of this and that, and you're trying to sort of balance between which ones you go, when you go, what you think other people have behind their shields, uh, and so doing that. And then also the plaques where like, ooh, I really want this pepper to go to the market or to go to the recipes. But you know what? I could just plant it right now and take a lot of, you know, a good deal of points right now. What should I do? And planting that might allow me to get some other peppers later. Uh, so I like the different avenues of different things you're trying to do and different ways to score points in the game. I like the turn order track and how it had sort of different order for different phases. So it just reminded me of like Power Grid, for example, where, hey, you're going to be, if you're first in turn order, you're going to be able to take the pepper for that round first from the auction. Uh, and you're going to get to go ahead and plant and things like that first but you're going to be harvesting last. And that could be a big deal because, you know, as the board gets crowded, if you're around other farmers, then they could block you from what you want to do and actually going last might be better. But I like that when you win the auction, you can choose where to go in turn order. You might choose last so that you can harvest first because you know that where you want to go, someone else probably wants to go too and they might block you from there. So I like the way that that turn order works both for the auction and for the peppers and for the planting and for the harvesting and fulfillment. You know, because hey, I might want to go last on harvesting, uh, sorry, last in turn order to go first in harvesting, but the player before me might be able to get that recipe before me. So there's a lot of things to think about there. Uh, one of the best mechanisms in the game, I'd say for sure. Uh, and then I, I do like the, the part that you can block others. Uh, so you're going through and you're, you know, hey, I know this person's probably going to try to go here. But again, the shields help that too, because you're not exactly sure how many things people have unless you're really memorizing what people are taking. Uh, so I like that aspect, the blocking aspect. It really brings a lot to the game as to, you know, the sort of the abstractness of moving around and then trying to see what people are going for. I like that once you plant those peppers, they're not necessarily yours. You're kind of using other people's peppers. You're using this community garden to go around and so, you know, you could sort of just build your own little engine off to the side and try to keep using that, but you're probably better off trying to utilize what other players are doing as well. And I like that aspect of it. So overall, there's a lot of positives here. Um, I think it's a, it's a well-designed game. I like the theme. I like a lot of things in it. Anything that I don't like about it. Uh, the game, I think, is one of those that definitely can be open to having analysis paralysis or AP. If you, if you, if you do tend to have that in games, this is likely to bring it out in the way that you're kind of staring at the board. You're looking at the peppers over there. You're looking at the ones behind your shield. You're thinking about where to plant. You're thinking about what to harvest. You're thinking about what to do. You're thinking a few turns in ahead. Um, you know, so th that can be an issue for some. Also, it does take a while to get to know that crossbreeding chart well. And I don't mean just like a little bit, but to the point where you can look at the board and go, okay, these two are gonna, these two green, uh, these two purples are gonna get me a white, this purple and an orange are gonna get me a black, or so, so on and so forth. And you're, you're getting used to like, okay, those secondary colors are the ones that are getting you the whites and the blacks that are very valuable. 
Uh, so it takes a little while to kind of get used to like just look at the board and just have that in your head cemented as to what it is. The player aid's great. It helps a lot for the first couple of games where you're getting used to what there, there is and what you're trying to get and what the different things do. But really, once you cement that in your head, the game becomes a lot more enjoyable. And it might take a few plays for you to do that. Not necessarily a big comp, but just know that the first game, first couple of games, you're going to sort of go through and have to study that chart, which is a good chart and it's done well. Um, but it might take a little while to sort of cement all that in your head. Uh, and then it might be a little bit too spatial for some, the way that you're putting out the, the, the peppers and the colors and what you're trying to do and how do I get there and different things like that. It might be a little too spatial for some, but overall, uh, I enjoyed the game. If you like a different style uh, game that has some familiar elements sort of together, but together uh, the game actually is better than the sum of its parts. Uh, so it's one I enjoyed, not one that totally blew me away, not one I'm going to be dying to keep playing over and over with a lot of people. Uh, but overall, it's, it's definitely a solid game, and that's Scoville. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.